Welcome back. This is video two for chapter seven. So if you haven't watched video one, you need to go back and watch video one. Otherwise, this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. All right, correlation properties. The sign of a correlation coefficient gives the direction of the association. Okay, so if the correlation coefficient is positive, that means you have a positive association. If the correlation coefficient is negative, that means you have a negative association. Positive association means that as x increases, y increases. Negative association means that as x increases, y decreases. Correlation is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So if you calculate a correlation, which we'll represent with a lowercase r, um, if it ends up being 2.3, you've got a problem, okay? It has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Correlation can be exactly equal to negative 1 or positive 1, but these values are unusual in real data because they mean that all the data points fall exactly on a single straight line. So, so that doesn't happen frequently. A correlation near zero corresponds to a weak linear association. Correlation treats x and y symmetrically. The correlation of x with y is the same as the correlation of y with x. That's what we mean by that. Correlation has no units. Correlation is not affected by changes in the center or scale of either variable. Correlation depends only on the z-scores, and they are unaffected by changes in center or scale. So that's why they have no effect on correlation. Correlation measures the strength of the linear association between the two quantitative variables. Variables can have a strong association, but still have a small correlation if the association isn't linear. Correlation is sensitive to outliers. A single outlying value can make a small correlation large and make a large one small. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind, even though we've made this declaration of explanatory and response variable, correlation does not equal causation. Whenever we have a strong correlation, it is tempting to explain it by imagining that the predictor or explanatory variable has caused the response um, to occur. Um, scatter plots and correlation coefficients never prove causation. A hidden variable that stands behind a relationship and determines it by simultaneously affecting the other two variables is called a lurking variable. Um, now, can you remember how we establish a cause and effect relationship? You remember from Unit 1, it is by conducting a well-planned um, statistical experiment. Correlation tables. It is common in some fields to compute the correlations between each pair of variables and a collection of variables and arrange these correlations in a table. So you can see here's all these different variables and you can see that the, the correlation among them. Notice that like assets to assets is one, sales to sales is one, market value to market value is one. Um, they only have half the table filled in because market value to assets there is 0 0.682. So assets to market value would still be 0 0.682 because of the symmetry. So there's no need to fill in that upper triangle of um, fields. Straightening scatter plots. Straight line relationships are the ones that we can measure with correlation or linear relationships. When a scatter plot shows a bent form that consistently increases or decreases, we can often straighten the form of the plot by re-expressing one or both variables. So here we've got a scatter plot of f-stop versus shutter speed, and it shows a bent relationship there. You can see the little bend in it. Re-expressing it by squaring the f-stop values straightens the relationship. It's a nice little line. All right, so the reason we want to do that is because then correlation um, provides, the correlation coefficient r provides a meaningful measure. Okay, it tells us something about the strength of the, that, that linear relationship there. And um, whereas here it would be meaningless, and a correlation coefficient would be meaningless because the form is not linear. Here the form is linear, so a correlation coefficient would make sense. Don't say correlation when you mean association. Like I, I talked about this in the other video, uh, more often than not, people say correlation when they mean association. 
The word correlation should be reserved for measuring the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables, especially in a statistics classroom or on the AP exam. Use correlation only for measuring the strength and direction of a linear relationship. Don't correlate categorical variables. Be sure to check the quantitative variables condition. Don't confuse correlation with causation. Scatter plots and correlations never demonstrate causation. Um, again, a, a good experiment where there's been random assignment of subjects to treatments and um, control over other variables, that's the only way that we can establish cause and effect. Okay, so just observing what's going on and making a scatter plot and reporting a correlation, you haven't assigned treatments to anybody at random. So you can't have established causation. These statistical tools can only demonstrate an association between variables. So in the wilds, when people are doing studies, um, what they may see, they'll do an observational study. They'll see a strong correlation between two variables. If it's ethical, then they may go ahead and do a, an experiment where they randomly assign levels of that explanatory variable to subjects and then measure and compare the response variable. Then, if, you, if the trend is upheld, you can as, um, assign a causation relationship, but only after conducting an experiment. These statistical tools can only demonstrate an association between variables. And like I said, sometimes that's, the, that's great. That's what people need to be able to justify doing an experiment that can establish causation. Be sure the association is linear. There may be a strong association between two variables that have a non-linear association. And so the correlation is going to be really small, but that doesn't even matter because it's not appropriate. For instance, here... Um, Obviously, you're scoring a cooking contest if you're baking cookies. If you've got the temperature too low and you end up with just kind of some warm dough, or if the temperature is too high and you end up with little charcoal briquettes of cookies, you're not going to get a very high score. The temperature needs to be somewhere around the ideal baking temperature for cookies. Um, in this case, you would get a correlation um, close to zero, but that that's just because it's not an appropriate measure here. There is an association, you can see it, but it's not linear. Don't assume the, line, the relationship is linear just because the correlation coefficient is high. Remember, you should look to make sure your um, relationship is linear before you even go about calculating a correlation coefficient because it's just it's nonsensical if you don't have a linear relationship. Here the correlation is 0.979, but the relationship is actually bent. So it doesn't matter, you don't have a linear relationship. Always check the scatter plot too. The relationship must be straight for the correlation to be relevant. So correlation is meaningless here. Beware of outliers. Even a single outlier can dominate the correlation value. Make sure to check the outlier condition. Okay, so let's look at an example. Now, you're probably going to need to stop and enter data into to your CAS. You know how to do that. If you don't, you really need to see me at this point. You've, you've got to know how to do it. Now, this time, the one thing that's different is you're going to put in two columns of, of data, two lists, one for the percent of teens who have used marijuana and one for the percent of teens who've used other drugs. So let's look at the overall problem. A survey was conducted in the United States in 10 countries of Western Europe, so there's 11 um, individuals involved, the different countries, um, to determine the percentage of teenagers who had used marijuana and other drugs. The results are summarized in the table provided. So you can look over here and go, okay, the Czech Republic, 22% of teens have used marijuana, 4% of the teens have used other drugs. Um, you go on down to Scotland, 53% of the teens have tried uh, marijuana, 31% have tried other drugs. USA, somewhere in the middle, with 34% have tried marijuana and 24% have tried other drugs. So order is going to be really important. You want to make sure when you enter the data in your, in your CAS that you enter it in order because, the, say, the 22-4 for the Czech Republic, that represents that particular country, that particular individual. So you want to make sure everything's paired up appropriately. So you, I would create one list and call it marijuana. I'd create another list and call it drugs and put in the, the data below. Okay. Um, you're going to create a scatter plot and then you're going to find the correlation 
And then you're going to write a brief description of the association. And then we're going to answer the question, do these results confirm that marijuana is a gateway drug? That mar In other words, that marijuana use leads to or causes the use of other drugs? And then we're going to explain. Okay. So here you can see I have the two. I, I just abbreviated things there for my two lists. You can type out the whole marijuana and then other drugs or just drugs. And make sure, again, see how in cell one I have 22 under the marijuana list and four for the other drugs um, because that's for the Czech Republic. So you want to make sure those are, are the ordered pairs are correct. Then I um, inserted a second page. Again, I chose the data and statistics. My first page, you know, is the lists page, spreadsheet and list. Second page is data and statistics. This time you just select your marijuana list for the horizontal axis, the other drugs list for the vertical axis, and boom, you have a scatter plot. It's really kind of a beautiful thing. So there's the scatter plot. You do need to Whenever you're told to create one, it's fine to create one in your CAS, and I want you to practice that. But if you're asked to create one, you have to write it down on paper. Now, you need to decide whether it's worth the, you know, 30 seconds it takes to create it in the calculator, or if you just want to draw it. And you don't have to create it in the calculator to draw it. Just do appropriate skills for the horizontal and the vertical, and plot your ordered pairs. You know how to make scatter plots. Okay. What is the correlation between the percent of teens who have used marijuana and the percent who have used other drugs? Go back to your first page, the one with the lists. Choose menu statistics, statistics calculations, and choose number four, linear regression A plus BX. You haven't chosen this before, but the process is very much like doing um, the one bar stats. The only thing that's different is instead of there just being one list, you need to indicate an X list and a Y list. So you need to indicate that the marijuana list is the X list and the other drug list is the Y list. Press OK and then find R. Now, we're going to learn what all the other stuff is for next time, but for today we're just interested in the correlation. So find R, that's your correlation coefficient, and report it to four decimal places. So I'm going to just round it so we get 0.9341. Now, if you need to pause Feel, I mean, I'm sure y'all do, but feel free to pause me. You can rewind me, you know, whatever you need to do. But I really encourage you to use your calculator and actually work through this. Write a brief description of the association. There is a strong positive linear association between the percentage of teenagers who use marijuana and the percentage of teenagers who use other drugs in the U.S. and Western Europe. Anything close to positive or negative one is a strong linear um, association. Do these results confirm that marijuana is a gateway drug, that marijuana use leads to the use of other drugs? Explain. No. Correlation does not imply causation. There could be lurking variables that explain the association. I mean, we don't even know which came first. So there's just, you know, somebody could have tried other drugs first and also tried marijuana somewhere along the way. We, we just don't know these things. So we can't say that the that there is necessarily a causation. Could there be? Sure. Of course there could be a, a cause and effect relationship, but we haven't established it. The way that we would establish it is by um, getting a bunch of volunteers and randomly um, assigning some of them to smoke marijuana and randomly assigning some of them to not smoke marijuana, perhaps even smoking at different levels, and then watch for their future their, their drug use, okay? But yeah, that, that would not be ethical, and so that is simply not an experiment that can be done, okay? But that's what would need to be done to be able to do cause and effect well. Okay, guys, that's it for Chapter 7 videos. Um, make sure you've got your chapter outlined and that you've taken notes from this video along the way and come to class ready to do those rounds, and I will see you then. Bye. Have a good evening.